Hello everyone and welcome back. So, ever since I saw this simulation uh, here in Reddit, I wanted to create my own version in Odini. And this was done by Max Shvugie. I don't know how to pronounce it, sorry. And you can check out his uh, own version on his Patreon, so just giving credit. I did it on a slightly different way and I want to walk you through how I have done it. So here in Odini I can show you my final result. As you can see it's not as great as Max version. But I did my best and didn't want to spend much time on it. So let's get started breaking down. I did everything in Odini, including the this modeling, which is really simple. And I'm gonna walk you through the network. So I'm just starting by creating a circle and a rounded square with the simple shapes, a rounded quad. And I'm merging them both and doing a poly bridge. From there I'm placing it in the center and grouping these bottom, bottom points and promoting it to an edge group to do the UVs. As you can see, this is how the UVs look, which can be used later on texturing if I ever texture this. Then I am polyfilling it and beveling the, the hard edges. Also doing the UVs on those parts and creating a UV layout. Let me just add the normal. So this is our base model. Let me just hide the camera or I can do hide other objects. Then I'm selecting the patch group that was created by this polyfill and I am group expanding it so I can create some more stiffness on the vellum seam. As you can see I'm creating uh, the bend stiffness. I am giving it a value of 10 on those frames and a value of 1 on the rest. Then let me just hide that. Then I'm creating two vellum seams. So one that is, I just let the, the object drop and it's like the initial state of the tube. So on the floor and slightly is not completely full as you can see. And I have another one which is the tube empty. And I just play honestly with the, with the bend stiffness and that's basically it as you can see by the values then i'm just attribute deleting just keeping the uvs to clean off the the attributes then i'm gonna create the rig we will use skin effects so for that i'm creating a line along the z-axis and match sizing it to the tube and resampling it creating the curve view attribute as you can see and then i'm transferring to the tube and from here first of all i have the two states as i told you and i am blending between them using uh, some procedural animation so fitting the frame between 1 and 48 from 0 to 1 I'm blending the two shapes since they have the same amount of topology I can just use a lerp and getting the position the position from the second input which is the this geometry and just using a lerp to to blend them as you can see. So from here I have the um, I have the line that will be used as our rig. 
Let me just disable these points. Then I'm creating a, an app attribute along this axis, doing a slightly a slight transform, a slight scale, because I was getting some issues with the rigging, so you can ignore that, but it's there. Doing a rig doctor to initialize the um, the rig and then doing a capture by proximity as you can see and it will look something like this and from here I have a lot of points but I want uh, to have a more straight look as you can see I don't want these fully rounded I want more this straight look and I should have done different sizes for for each part but i didn't so that's how it goes so in order to create this low poly look let's say or this straight look i am creating a group by range and selecting uh, some points in an interval and then in the rig wrangle which i had the help of swalsh I'm creating first the spiral, then doing an offset so I can scrub to so I can unroll the spiral. And I'm also using this ramp so I can have more control where it's where it's positioned, which is just a multiplier of the angle which is the spiral itself and then I'm animating it with a fit function from completely unrolled to almost fully rolled then I'm using a bond deform as you can see from the capture by proximity and using as the second input the rest position and then the animated one and this is how it looks, so this shouldn't be too slow, but I'm recording. And uh, from here, so we have this, and from here we're doing an attribute blur to smooth out a bit the shape because I was getting some intersection. Basically this capture by proximity is really fast but is not the best uh, rigging algorithm let's say or the best capturing system it's just the fastest one and it worked well in this case uh, start, then I'm caching so this is how it looks Deleting some attributes, just keeping the normals and the UVs, and also deleting most of the groups, just keeping the patch one. And from here, I have the tube animation, and let's see. In here, actually, it's pretty simple. I'm just creating a volume sim to have some displacement to use later in uh, rendering so nothing fancy in here and let's move on to also i have here the top part the modeling part of the, this top piece and this nothing fancy just started from the the patch group and did an extrusion and created a spiral and positioned it in here so that's just a static mesh that we need to deform to follow the tube animation so in here i'm loading the tube and doing a time shift and in here i'm orienting it to the tube as you can see and the way i'm doing that is by grouping that top part of the tube the patch and then converting it to points and creating a, re a reference point group 
so as you can see I have here in here basically by calculating the group point bounding box center of those primitives I have previously selected and from there I can just create a near point from that position and set the point group so that's how I'm selecting that point, adding the normals, which is really important, in this case point normals. So I can add the normal of that specific point that you can see in here. From there I have the I have the the shape that is positioned in the center and I can move it there. And the way I'm doing that is again the same logic as I have done in two videos already. Um, we have a selection of these unshared points and we grab the center, the bounding box center of that selection with getting get point bounding box center. Then we create the normals for it. So it will be on the minus Z. Then we have that specific point in here that I talked about and we grab the normals. Then you create the rotation matrix with diadral. So from the from this base position which is in here to the target one which is that reference point. And then we grab the position and we do the transforms. Again, I told you before, logic by Swalsh. And in here I'm doing the point deform. So basically taking the, the tube animation and the rest state of the first frame and transforming it, as you can see. But I had a slight problem in here, so basically when I did the first point deform I was getting this stretch look. So I did one with uh, an attribute blur, but as you can see it also transforms the outer part, so in the end I mixed both with the mask that I created in here. I believe so mask and I just uh, mix both results as you can see in here then doing an attribute blur let me just get rid of this visualization and this is our top part and it's animated and we just merge it with everything else and this is the final result so from here we go into the vellum simulation to create the vellum fluid. Basically we start with this prim that we have here that I saved as a prim group. So I am uh, deleting everything but that group, those polygons. Then deleting all the small prims with a measure and a blast and creating the normals that we will be using for the for the velocity from here we can do a small peak and extrusion and deleting the attributes and then do a time blend to create some subframes or some floating how is it called fractional frames so we don't get uh, stepping in our simulation at least is what I have noticed so in here I'm just creating some tubes to select from the vellum fluid so I can give it a different color since I'm not going to do the UVs and in the vellum fluid is simple you just put you just give it a really high viscosity. We can introduce some surface tension and then you can change the particle size as you like. 
In this case, I used a relatively small value. In here, I'm creating just the color lines and transferring the normals, as you can see. And they look like this. And they are animated, as you can see. Or the geometry is animated. Then I'm creating a point velocity from the normals. So if I turn on the trails, oops. I've done something in here. So if I turn on the, the trails, as you can see, is pointing in that direction. And then I create uh, an attribute adjust factor to, to increase the, the, the velocity along time, as you can see, is changing the length. And then I am introducing some randomization based on a sine wave. So we get the, the liquid going left and right randomly. So that, this is basically a sine wave implementation with amplitudes and frequency. I can just change how much frequency I want and the amplitude too. So this is our initial setup for the fluid. Then in here, I am getting the collision shape of the top part, which is also animated, and doing the vellum solver. In here, I'm just increasing the sub-steps and everything, and the ground position, which we'll be colliding with, and everything is by default. So if we check the final result, we get this. And we also have uh, an age attribute and some lines that we can use in shading. It ended up not being from not being the um, the greatest mask because I don't have enough points to have a smooth transition. As you can see by the meshing, I try to do some blurring and sharpening and it gets better, but it's still a bit, well, you you will have to increase the, the resolution of the sim. And by the way, this sim took on a potato computer like mine about 10 minutes, so it's not that complicated and about 50 megabytes of cache so really but this is simple stuff of course uh, i'm doing the meshing so nothing fancy just passing the age and the color lines as an attribute and decreasing a bit the particle separation in comparison to the to the particle size in the vellum fluid so always a good idea as you can see this is a bit messed up but then again so yeah that's basically the end of our network if i can show you again the final results and remove that ugly lines and see how it looks so as always, you can grab the file on my Patreon and you can also grab my procedural courses and many other perks there. And I hope you enjoyed this one. And again, if you really want to create this for real, I encourage you to check Max Patreon and support him. Thank you and I'll see you next time.